I'm Dave. And I'm Andrew. And together we are the IB English guys. We're IB English teachers, we're IB examiners, we're teaching partners, and we want to provide some skills for you to help you excel in the IB. Mr. Giles, today we have one of my favorite topics. What is it? Me too. We're going to talk about films. We're going to talk about terminology and deconstructing various shots in films. And it's really fun to talk about. Yeah, it's interesting, Mr. Giles, because as an English teacher, I understand what authors use. They use pens, they use words. What about filmmakers? What do they use? They use the camera. The camera is their tool. And we want to talk about how the camera is used in film. There's many aspects of film. There's many great YouTube videos that will give us information. But we want to do it through the lens of being English teachers and give you some tools of how you can deconstruct a film. We're going to start by looking at camera. What specifically do you want to talk about? I want to camera? talk about the notion of what exactly is a shot because that is the foundation, the core of what we're going to talk about today. What is a shot? Yeah, so we want to think about a shot as a sequence, as a basically a sequence of film. It's when the camera is rolling, and that sequence of film can be literally less than a second, or that shot of film can be as long as the entire film. And a film is composed of various shots that are edited, edited together and made into a particular scene which makes up a film. Yeah, there's so many aspects of film we could talk about today, but today we really just want to zero in and focus on two particular aspects of the camera. And in particular, we want to talk about shot distance and shot angle. These are obviously not very difficult to, to interpret or understand. Distance, of course, is just how far away is the camera from the subject. You know, and when you vary that distance, you'll notice that you'll have different effects on your viewer. How about camera angle, Mr. Giles? Yeah, we want to, again, just think about how that camera angle is used to create an effect. And again, that's the purpose of today's lesson is to really think about how can we talk about film, look at particular shots, and look at camera angle, camera distance, and make an interpretation of that of what we think the director is trying to convey. And we've decided to use what for our for well, analysis? Well, it's all over the news. People are watching it. We thought we'd take a crack at Squid Game today. And uh, we pulled a few screenshots from episode one. Uh, and if you go ahead in a moment and pause the video uh, and look down, you can see the different screenshots we're presenting today. And also you'll see a link to lots of really useful film terms, okay? All those cinematic elements are presented there. So use that handout and why don't you go ahead and push pause and we'll see you in 30 seconds. Look at the screenshots from Squid Game now. Okay, welcome back. I hope that you had a chance to look at some of those images from Squid Game. They're pretty rich, pretty interesting images. And we really tried to pull some things that we thought would be provocative and be interesting to talk about. Giles, let's look at image one. Tell me what you see with respect to camera distance, angle, and subtle details. Yeah, this shot is really interesting. It's a long shot. It's also taken from a high angle, so it's a high angle, a high angle long shot. And it's, again, giving that perspective of the entire room where all the subjects are located in their green jumpsuits. Yeah, and because it's such a long shot, I think that allows you to see some of their sleeping arrangements as well. If you've seen Squid Game, you understand that they're trying to portray the plight uh, of those who are marginalized in society, the masses. And we see them, you know, from this high angled long shot, we can really see the scope and we can see just how many people there are. I mean, you juxtapose that with those in power in the red suits and we can really see the difference between the haves and the have-nots. That's great, the haves and the have-nots, which is essentially what the film is about. It show, also that high angle shows their vulnerability. That's excellent. Next one is an extreme bird's eye, bird's eye view angle where the, the camera is actually taken right from above. Such an unusual shot, Mr. Giles. And for me, as the viewer, I immediately thought of Alice in Wonderland. And if you've seen Squid Game, you'll realize that the camera is actually moving. It's spinning at this point in time. So the entire frame is being spun for the viewer. And it really creates a disorienting, dizzying effect. It's almost like going down the spiral into darkness, into the Squid Game. Mr. Giles, does that remind you of anything? Yeah, this director was trying to mimic the style of an artist from the 1920s called M.C. Escher, and his his famous, famous drawings and paintings were de depicting these absurdist uh, images of, of endless staircases, again, kind of capturing modern, modern humans in their and keep being caught up. All right, so we're looking at angles, distance, and now you can incorporate illusion and color. Lots of elements happening simultaneously. Yeah. Image three, I, I really enjoy this image. I think if you've seen the series and you know this character, this is a uh, mid shot from a low angle. Uh, and shooting from that low angle really makes the subject look empowered. 
Uh, and because he looks larger than life, you know, we're looking up at him and thinking, wow, this is a sinister character. Any aspects or details you notice, Mr. Yeah, Thomas? I noticed that side lighting kind of accentuate his tattoo, that sort of snake tattoo. Again, the obvious symbolism of him being a very sinister character connected to uh, to that. And so, that, again, that that lighting it helps to accentuate his yeah. character and what he's like. Face tattoos? <laughs> yeah. Not, not, doesn't look like a very nice guy, Mr. Giles. Yeah. Moving on to the next image, we see a close-up. Mr. Jaws, what do you see in the close-up? Tell me what it is and let me see if I can explain. Yeah, it. close-up shot again, that close is making us drawing our attention to his 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 the pencil bubbling in the the, the his choice for the horse that he's gonna he's a, he's gambling and he's deciding on which horse he's gonna choose so he can place his bet. Yeah, and going close up and really zeroing in and zooming into this betting slip, you see the randomness of it all. I mean, he's got a few bubbles penciled in black. What is the likelihood of him winning, Mr. Giles? Doesn't yeah. look very good. Very but small. Despite the fact that his likelihood of winning is very small, you can see that he has a stack of bills. And I think if you're familiar with the series, that reflects the fact that he's, he's a gambling addict and he really struggles with making choices. Yeah. But it also captures the idea that as a member of the lower class, he really doesn't have much access or opportunity to making money. Really, he's left with gambling as his only option. That's right. It's tragic. That randomness of chance, that's, that's a big part of the film. The next shot's a medium shot. It's a very interesting over-the-shoulder shot from eye level that's capturing the subject as he's saying goodbye to his daughter and his wife and as they're going into their house and he's left behind. Yeah, and think about the lighting in this scene, Mr. Giles. It's nighttime, it's dark, the child is slightly illuminated. This is a really sad moment for our character. We're kind of standing behind him, looking over his shoulder, almost kind of eavesdropping uh, on this really upsetting moment for his family. Yeah, we see what he sees. And again, we get that sense of, of family separation. This next shot is one of my favorites in this entire sequence. So very interesting. Again, a medium shot, but it's from behind. We see the subject, it's sitting there, and he's watching another screen. That's a, this is a very interesting effect. Yeah, and again, looking at details, this is sort of the, the leader of the most affluent group in the film. He's sitting on a very comfortable leather sofa. He has whiskey off to his left. He looks very relaxed, and it's so ironic because he is completely relaxed while he's watching death, chaos, and destruction on the scene in front of him. And this I find deeply ironic because he's finding this violent, all, all the, the, the violence that he's looking at on the screen to be a form of entertainment, and he's sitting there. But ironically, that's what we're doing when we're watching the show, is that we're actually watching the violence ourselves and doing that for entertainment because we watch Netflix and... Let's face it, we're exposed to a lot of violence. Indeed, and when you, the next shot actually tells us in detail what he's looking at. And here you see this sinister doll. Uh, and if you're familiar with the series, we know that this doll actually turns out to be a, a mechanism that kills and guns down many of those green suited people in the arena. Uh, Mr. Giles, what's particularly notable about this shot, the way, the distance and the angle? That's right, they wanna really capture the sort of, the size of this doll, this, this, this obviously two times the size of a human being, an adult human being, and again, this, this is a very curious choice by the director, again, connecting that sort of childlike game that's being played, but it has a sinister, and we see, we see the sort of dominance of the doll, um, and the in the backdrop, the, the, this dead tree that's sitting there, I think really sort of creates a sinister effect. Yeah, and the last shot we want to present today is, of course, the extreme close-up. And again, speaking of irony, this is quite ironic because this doll, as you can see on her face, is quite emotionless. And what is she doing in this moment? She is shooting and killing people. And the fact that she's so emotionless and we can see that on her face, I think that accentuates just how the upper class oftentimes is just blind or uncaring about the suffering of the lower classes, which is a major message pushed in this film. So what's fun, I think, in doing this is we're trying to just isolate shots and then thinking about what we see in terms of camera distance, camera, camera angle. And then if you notice, we're really trying to give an interpretation and talk about what the significance is and what we think the director is trying to convey here. Uh, we hope you enjoy this video. There are many other aspects of film to talk about. We haven't talked about movement. We haven't talked about sound. Uh, please continue to watch these videos and that information will be coming to you soon, okay? Once again, if you like the channel, subscribe. Let us know what you want to hear about in the comments and we hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you for watching everybody and have a great day. Bye. Bye guys.